Hello and welcome to this review of my Laser 2269 keyboard. Laser is a brand from VTech, a Hong Kong company founded in 1976. They originally made video games, but in the early 80s branched out into making a series of IBM compatible PCs and later Apple II compatibles. They were actually quite popular in some countries and still exist, although they stopped making PCs in the late 90s due to growing competition. I'm not actually sure what computer of theirs this keyboard belonged to, but considering it uses a full-size, not too outlandish layout, and it was made in 1993, I'm guessing it'll be one of their later models. The layout is what I refer to as the Monterey layout, with a big-ass enter, full-size backspace, and these two keys betwixt the modifiers. This is an excellent layout in my opinion, by the way. It's one of two well-known laser keyboard models. I say that because this is the keyboard that people generally go to when they want to try clicky SMKs, and the other one is the one that they try out and then find that it comes with dome with slider switches instead, which are worse. Although I think that version could also come with SMKs. More specifically, the switch is a SMK second generation of the clicky type, which I've previously shown keyboards of that use the Alps mount version with a blue slider, which is widely known in the community as the Monterey switch, because it was first reported in a Monterey K104. However, SMK also did a version with an inverted cross mount, and some with cherry mount, which is the one in this board. SMKs are really nice, one of the most overlooked switches out there in my opinion. They're quite light and feel very crisp and delicate, leading to a soft typing style that's very relaxing. Personally, I'd say that if you like light clicky switches like MX Blue, this is the one you should get. And not MX Blue. If I compare them to the Alps mount version in this Monterey K110, which I reviewed ages ago, they feel pretty much exactly the same, which makes sense of course, and they're extremely nice. Every time I break out these clicky SMKs I'm reminded of how good they actually are, and they never disappoint. I definitely recommend them. The sound between the two is a bit different, but I think that's largely due to differences in the chassis and keycaps. Of course, the advantage of this version over the Alps one is that this is the cherry mount type, which means that they have far more options for keycaps. You can also buy the Switch's new old stock for very little money, it used to be just 12 cents a piece, but that link now appears to be dead, and although the pinout is different, there are several custom PCBs that support SMKs now, so really there's virtually no excuse not to use them. They even use the same plate footprint as Cherry MX. If you do not wish to fuck around with custom PCBs, then these laser keyboards are by far the most forthcoming source for them. And they're really nice and cheap too, they can generally be had for just a few tenors off of eBay. Mine, this one, was in practically mint condition as well, it's super duper clean, I haven't done anything about it except make it dirtier through use. This is one of those largely undiscovered keyboards that fly under most people's radar. The sound is very delicate too, it's sharp and somewhat high pitched and I describe it as being somewhat between Alps and click bar switches. It's quite pleasant, here's a short demo. The keycaps are also pretty good, and of course, MX mount. They're thick ABS double shots, averaging at around 1.5mm, same as Cherry's own OG double shots, and they have a very distinctive all caps typeface, it strongly resembles the one Keytronic used even, and they might be an indication that the keyboard uses SMKs, because the dome with slider version seems to use a very different typeface. I think they look really good to be honest. Some people have asked me what the keycaps are that I put in my GMMK, they're also laser caps actually, albeit with sharp corners rather than rounded ones. I got donated this set of keycaps, along with many many others, by a viewer at some point, and they've been very useful because they're actually pretty great. The build quality of the board is where we get slightly disappointed, and this is an unfortunate side effect of SMKs, seemingly through coincidence, all models they appeared on had terrible build quality. My sixth ever review, recorded about five years ago, all the way back when Adam and Eve still walk the earth, was about this Ciccone 5981, which is a rare instance of a keyboard with Windows keys that has good vintage switches, and it similarly had pretty terrible build quality. It seems SMKs were just never used on boards with tough builds. I guess they were cheap back in the day as well. <laughs> The laser really kicks it up a notch though. The case is pure plastic, not that thick, and it makes the most horrible creaking noise I've ever heard in a keyboard when you flex it even just a little bit.
This is so much worse than anything else I've ever heard, but I dare not actually do a real flex test on it for fear of breaking it in twain, which would be a real shame because it's otherwise such a nice board. The weight is less than a kilogram, pretty disappointing for a full size and fairly pathetic for a vintage one, and this is partly because they didn't bother fitting it with a mounting plate for the switches, not even a plastic one, they're all PCB mount. <laughs> Maybe they asked Cherry to build it for them or something. <laughs> Nah, just kidding. It's still built better than a cherry keyboard. Apart from the build being less than ideal, to put it mildly, the board is actually quite good. Really nice switches, excellent keycaps that look pretty cool, and a great layout. Easy to convert to, as it's AT protocol, so an AT converter like this Sora's, or a PS2 adapter plus a converter, will allow you to use it over USB. And it's generally pretty cheap to get hold of. So yeah, I can definitely recommend these. You're in for a treat, I'd say. Although the board doesn't have N-key rollover, which you might be tricked into thinking it does because of the large amounts of diodes on the PCB, although quite a few of them are actually just jumpers by the way, the switches have no hysteresis and the light weighting means that it does duty just fine as a gaming keyboard in my opinion, provided you don't need the N-key rollover. This is a very versatile little board, crappily made though it might be. In fact, this is a rare instance of what I call a go-to keyboard. See, sometimes you just need a board that can do everything properly and without complication. So just plug it in and then it does everything you want without fucking up. Now, to clarify, for this, N-key rollover is not a necessity in my opinion, as long as its matrix doesn't noticeably fuck up. Here is the wall, which houses the majority of my collection. It's got almost 300 different models of keyboard in it, spanning from 1970 to keyboards that haven't even been released yet. And although many of these are great keyboards, only a surprisingly low number of these I would classify as go-to keyboards. One big problem, for example, is that many of these are not USB compatible or easy to convert. For example, if I pan up a little bit, this Chiron keyboard, the aircraft carrier, that sun there, those two wangs, and almost everything on the top shelf, I can't really use at the moment. And there's quite a few like that in this collection, so that's already a big number I can't even use to begin with. Some others, like this Chikoni 5161, are in thusly bad condition that I can't use them optimally. In some cases, the switches might be too scratchy, for example. In this one, it's because it uses Omron switches, which are liable to fail after a while. And indeed, this one has a couple of dead switches in it. And since the majority of my collection consists of vintage, second-hand keyboards, there are a number that suffer from problems like that. Now, I do have a large amount of modern keyboards as well. They're located mostly on the bottom here. And of course, those don't really have these problems. I mean, they're all USB and of course they're very new. However, almost all of them are based on MX type switches, such as Cherries, Gatorons, Greetex, Kales, TTCs, and millions of other nearly identical rehashes of the same switch. And that's just not good enough for me. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that like them and good for you guys, but after trying out all the amazing alternatives, they just don't really cut it anymore, for me at least. Of course, that's not to say that all my vintage keyboards have amazing switches though. Some of these boards have absolutely terrible switches. Way worse than even really, really low-grade MX clones. I mean, my top 10 list of worst switches only had vintage stuff in it, not a single MX type one. Then there's the layout. There should be nothing too weird and fully functional, so nothing like a TKL or some other space-saving bullshit, it must be at least a full size. I don't want to fuck around with layer keys or nonsense like that, I just want everything to be there and where I expect it to be. And this can be a bit of a problem with vintage boards because many use strange layouts that are suboptimal. For example, this IBM model FAT here, which is a spectacularly good keyboard with outstanding switches, great build quality, and which is readily convertible to USB, uses an AT layout, which, although not terrible or anything, is not really pick up and play for me. So even that isn't a go-to for me. Same goes for their FXT or the Pingmaster, actually. And finally, it should have no niggles, so to speak. For example, this P70, excellent keyboard by the way, I converted a while ago, but my fix has made it so that every time I press one of the lock buttons, the whole board stops registering completely. And everything else is fine, but that's just not something I want when I'm looking for a keyboard that doesn't fuck up. Another example is this Zenith KBD17, which has a really annoying rollover issue over USB, where it releases your switches if there's a conflict in the matrix, which is laid out terribly, by the way. 
Even this IBM 5251, which is possibly the best keyboard I own, with unsurpassed switches, astonishing build quality and keycaps, and stellar <laughs> virtually everything else, and which overall is way better than that puny laser thing, uses NXT-like layouts that's simply not ideal for if I just need something accessible quickly. So the laser might not excel in any one area, and it has the build quality of a bog roll, frankly, but it's extremely usable and has great switches, and that's what I look for in a go-to keyboard. Honestly, for a flimsy, cheaply made, ultra-low budget piece of shit from, what, more than 25 years ago, I really like this thing. Thumbs up to SMK, I guess. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.